civil unrest. I've told you about civil unrest, what they have said about me. I'm a paranoid lunatic. I'm seditious. It's suffocating uh, vision, I think a suffocating vision of paranoia. Really. Showing you for a year in advance, a year in advance, I told you unrest was coming to Europe and then it's coming here. I have shown you now in the last few months the actual unrest and violence in the streets of Europe. Again, today in Greece, the Union shut down public transportation. Who did I tell you would do that? The unions. Students are taking to the streets again in England over possible tuition hikes. I told you that would happen a year ago. We showed you the burning cars. We've showed you how they are mirroring the failed economic policies here in America. I'm a paranoid lunatic, seditious. This must just be suffocating paranoia. Now, let me ask you this. Are they willing now to say the same thing about the Pentagon? Because they have been wargaming an economic crisis for almost two years now. One of these war games was called Unified Quest 2011. Listen to what they are preparing for at the Pentagon. In that wargaming series, they're looking at the implications of large-scale economic breakdown inside the United States that would force the Army to keep, quote, domestic order among civil unrest and force the Army to deal with fragmented global power and drastically lower budgets. That's weird. That's weird. That's just paranoid lunatics. They're seditious over there at the Pentagon, I guess. Now, what would be some of the things that might cause civil unrest? Well, let me show you a picture today from TheBlaze.com. It's of the Alaskan National Guard taking place, uh, taking a part in an exercise here for civil unrest. Oh, what does the guy have, the demonstrator have? Well, it's a sign that says, food now. Well, why would he need a sign like that? Oh, yeah, that's right. The suffocating vision of paranoia. Uh, food shortage or food being scarce or food just being too expensive because coming inflation absolutely without merit and I'm mentally ill really the National Guard is going for that along with the Pentagon I've talked about the importance for preparing for tough times, having enough food and supplies, getting out of debt, being self-reliance, the reaction without merit, doomsday, probably mentally ill. But when Time Magazine posts an article, impending crisis, earth to run out of food by 2050, I'm sure this is some sort of green nightmare. This, this is good journalism. The only people I trust in the government, the only ones I trust, are the military. The military is preparing. Are you? But the military, I believe, are being boxed into a corner by people who actually have their hands on the levers of power. And it is those holding the levers of power that have been creating the conditions to make these scenarios possible. And that goes anywhere from Harry Reid to Obama all the way to the kingmaker himself, George Soros. Not the guy who has a stupid show at 5 p.m. or 2 p.m. Pacific. I mean, who am I up against in the, in the Pacific Coast? The price is right. The media will demonize and glorify whom they want. The point of this mo monologue is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're me or Soros or the Pentagon or economic experts. It doesn't matter. We're now all saying the same thing. I've been saying it for two years. That should tell you something that they've now joined. Because the next thing on the docket is to control the media and to control food prices. Civil unrest and rising food prices and controlling the media. Oh, December 20th, FCC votes on the internet. If anybody doesn't believe this government is capable, capable of doing these kinds of things, you're out of your mind. 
If you don't think the government could come in and take your gun, you're out of your mind. Let me show you this. You don't think that they're going to run roughshod over your civil rights? See this woman here? Probably never seen it. You should. Know her. Watch the video. This is the aftermath of Katrina. I don't want to go because I got plenty. Mandatory evacuation. Everybody in the See, this is why I didn't want to, I didn't want to let you guys come in. I know, ma'am. Because I wanted to hurry in here, and all you guys come in, and I knew this was Stop the tape here. Stop the tape here. She doesn't want to let them in. They want to take her gun. A law-abiding citizen. Do they take it? And what happens? Watch. Yeah, they throw her against the wall. Oh, yeah, they took it. A law-abiding citizen. How old is she? 80? She hadn't broken any laws. Her guns were forcibly taken from her. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, they'll never do that again. They did it then. Oh, well, they'll never put troops on the ground. Posse comitatus, you know, or rock me Amadeus, or whatever. President won't do that. Well, first of all, right. Second of all, remember the president established a little council of governors? They said it was just to prepare for a national crisis situation. President Obama established this little council that would involve the National Guard and Homeland Defense and civil support in, and synchronization and integration of all state and federal military activities inside the United States. Oh. But forget about that. Now just uh, for, go back to sleep. Forget. Shh. It's okay. Just listen to my voice. Think of the brilliant, kind hearted philanthropist George Soros. He says Fox News and Glenn Beck are going to turn into dictators with a tea party and all the stupid people. <laughs> Do not listen to what the evil con artist Glenn Beck says. By the way, back to reality here. The lady in New Orleans, she was 